Muy buenos días. Good morning. As the Library of the Congress of Chile, we're very happy to take part in this event. It has been said that we live in a time of strong executive powers and weak parliaments. But we are convinced that strengthening parliament is key to have a democracy that could be a la par of the challenges of today's society. Today, in this World Conference on E-Parliament 2016, we want to present our system, history of the law and parliamentary work. We believe that uh, the sites that we will be showing are an optimum expression of the use of open data that are linked to the construction of a semantic web at the service of parliament and democracy. We are speaking of giving access with a pair of clicks, not only to the national legislation online, but also to the true history of the way it was established. There, that is, we make available legal information that is relevant for institutionality, for the courts, and of course, for people when they are exercising their rights. The structure of our presentation ha makes a brief reference to the different areas of the uh, Department of the Library of the Congress of Chile. Then we have an overall view of the legal and legislative uh, functions that it performs. And then we have the presentation of our site's history of the law and parliamentary work. We're going to try and communicate this the best way possible. So we will be actually using, in parallel, a video with very representative images of the key ideas that we want to highlight in our presentation. The Library of Congress is an organization that has been alive for 130 years. It's a Republican organization that contributes to the work of parliamentarians in 13 areas. First of all, through its bibliographic services, it makes available to parliamentarians and uh, citizens the depository of bibliography with uh, texts on economy, politics, and so on. Also, a significant number of databases and a modern system of processing press information. Then we have services for parliamentary advisory services. 150 professionals of different uh, disciplines that work in this. They uh, advise parliamentarians in uh, commissions and also for individual parliamentarians. And lastly, the legal and legislative process. These are related to storing, processing, and making available to parliamentarians and the legal community and citizens legal information that is relevant to their work. So the objective of these services is using open data to contribute to the democratization of information, transparency, certainty, and legal certainty as well. So we're going to focus basically on the legal and legislative aspects that we focus on. First of all, the list Chile is the most complete database of legal topics. It contains 300,000 rules with their text fully accessible. There were more than 12 million visits in 2015. It's a continuous service with certified processes under ISO 9001-2008. It's important to mention that the report from the OECD 2016 about regulatory policies in Chile highlights eChile as a uh, repository that provides safety to the national legal system. Then we have Ley Facil, which in a very easy to understand language shows the laws enacted by Congress. 
Also, it gives access and greater tools for citizens to get to know about their rights and their responsibilities. It's quite attractive. There's also sign language law and also in original people laws. Also, we have a free access to content on parliament, laws, and history of Chile in general. After reviewing the main aspects of the library's work, we will review now the system history of the law and parliamentary work, which will be presented today. What are these two sites about? This system is comprised of two web services, the purpose of which is to gather automated information of all the activities carried out in the parliament associated to a given law or to actual oversight or legislative action of a parliamentarian. This was launched with the Senate and the Chamber of Deputies last year. The library gathers the information by both chambers. It processes the information and then marks it using the standard that is pertinent to this type of activity activities, the Acomento also as has been mentioned. These services contribute to the development of an open parliament because their objective is to have transparent information on the information generated by the Congress, making it more democratic through technological platforms that are open, of free of use and accessible to citizens. And now I will leave the floor open for Karim Orrego, who will speak a bit more with greater depth of these websites. Good morning. I think it's interesting to underscore that what we're going to see now is the expression of the use of open data through the sites that are made available, especially through opendata.cl. And the processing of this information allows to have platforms that are accessible to citizens that allow to carry out specific searches but with very flexible tools at the same time. First of all, we will look briefly at the site Historia de la Ley, History of Law. This is a service of the National Library of Congress that makes available to users in general all the history of how a law was established, all the uh, background information that led to the enacting of a law. So it's a very interesting tool, an important tool in Chile and for many countries in, in terms of interpreting you know, the historic elements, uh, and in, especially for those cases where the reach of the legislation isn't that, as clear. All of this background information is made available in a structured way through the processing, the formats, open data, and de la Comentoso, and the use of XML uh, legislativo. It allows, for example, to you can input the number of the law, and this gives a certain of matches within the system. We have here a general history of the law and the history of each of the articles included in that law. We can also see that it's very user-friendly for navigation, and there is a, an actual tree for navigation on the left-hand side. This shows each of the documents that are the different steps of the process. And also we have the related uh, storylines or history that is related to the law. And, and we have links to all the particular history of the law. We're also looking at flexibilizing and generating documents based on the needs of users. Normally, we're looking to find a certain sense within history, and we can incorporate this term or phrase within the search, and then the system only delivers or shows up those elements that match that type of search. We can also compare versions, so we can review the evolution of the text of the bill d during its processing. And this is very interesting, especially for researchers who are trying to in uh, investigate how did a law change during the entire process. Through this comparison, I can look specifically at each of the articles of a given law through tools that would imply an internal processing of referencing and generating links at the same time during the processing of documents that are part of this history of a given law. For example, here we have a general vision 
of the versions of the bill and a particular view when we review an article uh, under analysis and we can see selecting from the tool how this article evolved during the processing of this bill. The system also allows uh, for advanced searches, and this could be related to the degree of detail with which the information is processed, which is related to the history of the law. Each document has quite a lot of processing involved that allows the incorporation of several parameters, adding and excluding things of searches. In this case of advanced search, we can uh, search from the number of the law if we have it. We can review or check if there are articles related to history of that law and incorporate another uh, bit of data that could be the particular ministry, for example. So. Another option, if you don't know the number of the law, which in Chile is something very important, I can obviously include a term and then I can have access to the history of the law, the number of which I do not know. So I can exclude or include elements that allow me to have a specific match for what I'm looking for. Within the processing, we also have specialized metadata related to each of the documents. This allows to group different histories of laws depending on the topic. This is very interesting because with just one click I can have access to all the history of the law, for example, to labor accidents or uh, accidents at work. I could see the reasons why did this law evolve in a certain way. This system is updated constantly with the publishing and enacting of laws in Chile and the final document that has all this usability incorporated is incorporated in the history of the general law. In this case, we have a, a law which is uh, relatively recent, 2015. We can navigate through the history of that law in the website, but it also allows us to unload it in different formats, XML, PDF, Word, and so on. In this game, case I'm going to download a Word file and in one document I can have access to all the history and background information that uh, allowed that law to come about and, and at the same time incorporate the text of that given law. The second website is the parliamentary web. This is a web service of the National Library of Congress which makes available to users the activities of parliamentarians and the oversight of them. Not only those in exercise, but those that historically have been part of the entity. So it also has the information of former parliamentaries and in a very simple way you can make a search with the name. I can have uh, as a match not only the parliamentarian in question, but all parliamentarians that refer to this given parliamentarian in their interventions, in hearings and so on. We can uh, look at their history in Parliament, all their biography, all that information is available in one platform. Also, their parliamentary work is differentiated based on the type of participation. This implies uh, the actual marking of the documents under the XML documentoso, we select the, the labels. We can also have access to a direct uh, intervention or presentation in Congress, and I can uh, download that as well in different formats, and that allows me to have a document where I have the actual intervention or participation that I want to store. The site also gives the possibility of making advanced searches of all the sessions on a daily basis that are the basic input for this platform. I can look for something very specific. This shows the granularity of the system, so I can look at a, a type of text, a type of participation or intervention by a parliamentary uh, in that uh, topic, and I can, for example, have access to these two interventions by this parliamentary. And I can also download them. Now I can make other types of searches. Uh, I, it, this, we also have parameters for other criteria. I can look for a given uh, term or a date and a type of intervention that I am interested in. Every intervention related to that uh, term 
uh, there. So in this case, we have 10 instances. So then we can have a downloadable document that is personalized based on the interests of, of, the, of the user. And we can have information on all the members of parliament that participated in the processing of that bill. This platform also allows to download parliamentary work, the complete work of uh, the member of parliament. And, and every citizen has access to that. This is a PDF document that allows us to review all the parliamentary work in different interventions that they've had. Thank you very much for your attention. Any question or comment, we are available. We invite you to check the website of uh, the National Library of Chile, of Congress. And you can see the different ways in which we can have access to this through open data. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I would like to thank the representatives of Trinidad and Tobago, Peru, Morocco, and another person for their questions. We will try and make an effort to reply. Why did um, Parliament, through the library, make a special effort to create these services online for people to know of national legislation? In Chile, as I'm sure you know, and as also happens in other parts of Latin America, we have a presidential system. This means that there is a significant asymmetry between the attributions of the executive and legislative branches. Often this leads to a certain distance between citizens and parliament and members of parliament. In fact, one part that explains this distance has to do with a lack of knowledge of the main output, the result of what is done by MPs in a system such as ours, that is legislation, which is the main source of uh, law. What has the Chilean parliament done through its library? Well, try and make available to citizens as a whole all laws in Chile. At the moment, we have 300,000 norms in digital format, free of charge, always updated and available to citizens. But this is not sufficient. We have made a significant effort to also make available to citizens in a clear and simple language regulatory content that's not always easy to understand. We've uh, used radio theater legislation expressed in sign language in thinking of inclusion expression in indigenous languages as well. And we've now supplemented this by providing the content on the history of law and what has been done by Parliament. The idea is for citizens to know how their representatives, their MPs, have behaved in processing these laws. That is an effort that we are embarked on today, and this endeavor to explain it in general terms, has enjoyed double backing. On the one hand, a budget that has allowed us to have a, a skilled team in order to carry out all of this within a time frame of approximately 30 years in all the history of law and the task of Parliament, which is what we were showing you today, this has taken us a couple of years. The second component has to do with using what we have called the public-private partnership. For example, in our case, empowering our database in order to provide the services of the history of law and the task of parliament, this has been done together with a university here through a tender. I will ask Karen to add to this 
and share whatever information may have been missing in my response. Well, referring specifically to the questions asked about the system, the first had to do with the time that all of this work is required. Initially, there was an exploratory stage. We had an idea, but we need to decide which would be the best platform in order to provide this. I mean, considering that the information should be uh, reusable, open, and all of the things that we've heard of during the presentation. Five years, first for exploration and a second stage that had to do with the development as such. It began in previous legislative periods, pre-60, 73, and so we saw how this resulted in what we were looking for. Challenges at the time were is especially adapting XML to the uh, specificities of Chilean legislation, maintaining the basic arrangement that he has shown the international standard today. And also, in general, the necessary platforms, which in fact are a constant challenge because they need to be adapted to needs the information that is being included every day more and more, which means that the database must be constantly updated, providing te uh, specialized technological support every day. Someone here in Peru was asking, uh, they're also working on something very similar to our history of the law. And in fact, in the near future, we also intend to include videos because quite clearly this provides citizens a very clear idea of the content of the interventions. And these videos, in the case of the library, are available to the public and we are now in a process of seeing how to link the video because in how can we tag this to the work of each MPs and make it part of the interventions as such? We're working on that. Citizen access, yes, this is also an area of concern. Today, our challenge is to provide visualizations in the system to make it all more accessible because quite clearly the system we want it to be flexible, but the system itself is pretty dense. So it is difficult to create tools for this to be made easier. Uh, well, opinions of uh, stakeholders, well, today we have those that are official, that are contained in the reports of the committees during the processing of the bills. And then Morocco was asking me about human resources. Of course, technological support here is essential. We need top-level engineers that work at the library of the parliament and that daily contribute knowledge to the progress of the system. And of course, using legislative XML, which is is essential for the system. And lastly, well, open data. Day sites that today have open data are uh, Parliament, the Chamber, and datacn.cl, all are available for any person. So they're also being used by universities for research purposes. And I understand that right now they're available both in Spanish, and the idea is to make them uh, extensive in uh, available in other languages as well.